Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got an emergency patch from Apple. This patch fixes a single vulnerability in WebKit and affects Mac OS Monterey, iPad OS, iOS, and then we also have a standalone update for Safari that is for Mac OS Big Sur and Catalina. So for the last two versions of Mac OS. The individual flaw being patched here is CVE 2022. 22620. Like I said, it's a WebKit vulnerability that can lead to arbitrary code execution. So typically this would be exploited via a malicious website that's viewed in Safari. But WebKit can also be used in other components within these operating systems that display HTML content. What made this patch so urgent is that it was already being exploited in the wild. And not sure if you're following some of the discussions around NSO Group and similar companies that have used some of these unpublished vulnerabilities in the past. I believe part of the cleanup around all of this triggered this uh, recent sort of increase in these kind of vulnerabilities and related patches. I believe this is the third one now that we had within a couple months. And then in more sort of run of the mill exploits, we uh, did see an increase in our honeypots for uh, hits that looked for a Cell network accessible storage vulnerability. The reason I kind of point this one out is not because it's really super recent. It's about a year old, this vulnerability. But when it originally became public, it was after the exploit was already traded sort of in underground forums. About half a year ago, it certainly has been seen exploited rather widely. But then again, these network accessible storage devices really are a little bit sort of a focus of mine lately because I see so many people are using them and exposing them to the internet because that's sort of how they're advertised. Had a few years back, actually, a lawyer that tried to share documents with me via a similar device, not a psych cell, that was exposed to the internet. So uh, definitely don't do this. Don't fall in this trap. This is not what these devices are really good for. Yes, they're advertised in many cases this way, even though some of the vendors lately moved away sort of from that specific use case. Patching them can also be a little bit tricky in terms of uh, keeping up uh, with patches available. I would recommend like, you know, once a month, like when you're checking your router firmware, also make sure that your network accessible storage device is up to date. Yes, you're not exposing it. Still, you know, there are possibilities uh, via some of the web attacks and cross-site request forging and the like that uh, someone may be able uh, to attack uh, this uh, device. And if you're into pen testing, you may have noticed that in particular, Windows 11 uh, client no longer offers the WMIC tool, which is sort of a go-to tool for remote access uh, to systems. Well, uh, Microsoft officially is deprecating the tool and starting actually with Windows 10 version 21H1. It's now being replaced by the Windows PowerShell for WMIE. So uh, no real change here in uh, threat or attack surface. The feature is still there. Just the WMIC tool is gone. So time to learn a new tool set. And apparently users of Zoom have been reporting that the microphone indicator is still enabled on Macs even after a meeting in it, indicating that the microphone may still be recording. Now, back in December, Zoom did release an update that as one of the items stated that they fixed this problem with the microphone indicator. Not clear if there is, of course, any actual audio being collected here uh, by Zoom. But uh, just in case, if you're not using any application like this, you may as well completely exit it instead of just exiting a particular meeting. 
In Sentinel Labs has an interesting blog post how apparently activists are targeted by a group that Sentinel Labs calls Modified Elephant. This is a more a targeted attacks and what's happening here that in addition to malware, this group is then using the malware to plant incriminating files on the victim's system and then in some cases even leading to the prosecution of these victims. I heard the stories in the past about uh, criminals sometimes using it as a defense stating that whatever incriminating files were found on their system were planted by malware. Uh, this is actually the first time I've seen uh, this sort of actually happening. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.